Okay, um, so we're starting a new unit, um, chapter 9, and we're going to be getting into um, some trigonometry, um, and to start off this unit 9, we'll talk about the Pythagorean Theorem, which I'm pretty sure most people are already familiar with, because we've used it before. Um, but uh, let's uh, just define what the Pythagorean Theorem is. So, the Pythagorean Theorem, it's... Um, it's a theorem that describes the relationship between the side lengths of a right triangle. So make sure that it, um, we're, we're only talking about right triangles. So Pythagorean theorem should only be used for right triangles, and, and right triangles are triangles that have a 90 degree angle. So it's uh, only for right triangles. describes the relationship so it describes the relationship between the legs of a right triangle And so um, here's what it pretty much states. It states this right here. So first of all, we have to understand the the uh, parts of a right triangle. Okay, the there are actually specific names for its side lengths. So um, the side lengths that form the right angle are called the legs. So we say A and B are the legs. of the right triangle and then C is the hypotenuse and longest this is the longest side so the longest side is always the hypotenuse and that is C okay and so the Pythagorean theorem just basically says that if you take the sum of the legs squared so if you square the legs and add them together so a squared plus b squared and it's the sum of them if you do that this is equivalent to the hypotenuse squared so there you go there's the Pythagorean theorem um, right here is just some common Pythagorean triples so basically what this means what this is what this tells us is that these are um, right triangles with uh, whole integers so see here we have we have three four and five so we can make a a right triangle with side lengths three four and five so remember that the hypotenuse is the longest side so we can make a right triangle with side length four and three with a hypotenuse of five and then 5, 12, and 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. So these are all whole integers. Um, and you can see here that uh, you can multiply these. Um, and yeah, it's basically these are these are just because uh, a lot of the times in our right triangles you'll come to see that we're not going to get very pretty numbers all the time because um, whenever we solve for C so like right here if I wanted to solve for C I would have to take the square root of both sides so then I'd get C is equal to the square root of a squared plus B squared which means I'm probably gonna get a square root of a number of some number that I can't fully take the square root of um, and so you'll see that we we might not always get pretty numbers when we use the Pythagorean theorem and these are just cases where pretty much a right triangle will have easy numbers whole integers integers not radicals or irrational numbers um, so we'll get into that but uh, so let's talk about this one right here so find the value of x and um, tell whether the side lengths form a Pythagorean triple. 
So you can see here that we don't have the longest side and the longest side is always opposite from the right angle. Um, it's always a slanted one. So um, if we use the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared remember that a and b are the legs c is the hypotenuse so I guess we shouldn't say uh, so we should say that a and it doesn't matter which one you identify as a or b this could be a or this could be a it doesn't really matter so we could say 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to uh, x squared and we're trying to find this x value um, 5 squared is 25 uh, 112 or 12 is 12 squared is 144 so 25 plus 144 get okay, 169 so x squared is equal to 169 I can take the square root of both sides and x is equal to let's see if we can take the square root of that and I get 13 so x is equal to 13 so this right here has a length of 13 and tell whether the side lengths form a Pythagorean triple and thing is because it's a whole number because it's an integer then yes it it does all these are integers so yes it does form a Pythagorean triple and you can see right here uh, this is the one that is stated up here 5 12 and 13 now we can continue to make triples by just multiplying these numbers so you can multiply by 2 you can multiply it by 3 you can multiply it uh, you know um, so forth so this would be multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 yada 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 so that's what this says is that you can multiply these by x and some number and you can keep getting Pythagorean triples from it alright let's try this one right here so use the Pythagorean theorem and tell whether or not it forms a Pythagorean triple. So notice here though that one of the legs is missing. That's we're trying to find the x, which is now one of the legs, and the hypotenuse is not. So if we set this up in the equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, again these are a and b and it doesn't matter which one you assign to which. So I'll just I'm just gonna do seven squared plus x squared equals 14 squared so you notice it's different because now the unknown variable is right here so I'm going to subtract 7 squared so I get x squared is equal to okay, 14 squared minus 49 which is 7 squared and I get 147 and I can take the square root of that so I get x is equal to the square root of 147. So if you try and plug that in here, you see that we don't get a perfect number. So if that's the case, then you're going to have to simplify the the radical. But I do know 147 is equal to 49 times by 3, which is helpful because then square root of 49 times square root of 3 and square root of 49 is 7, so 7 square root of 3 would be the simplified radical. So this is equal to 7 square root of 3. So does this form a Pythagorean triple? And the answer would be no, it doesn't, because this right here is not an integer, and so not a Pythagorean triple. Okay. So here are a couple um, examples that you can go over. And again, remember, it says to tell whether the side lengths form a Pythagorean triple. Um, so it's up to you guys how much you want to practice this. But uh, just uh, refer to these examples if you need help setting it up. But uh, if you also want to make sure that you're getting the answers right, um, in this example, you should get like a 135 for x. For 2, you should get uh, 4 square root of 3. For 3, you should get x is equal to 25. For 4, 
you should get uh, x is equal to 2 square root of 34 for 5 x is equal to 22 square root of 6 for 6 x is equal to 102 so make sure you try them out and get those answers and it should be good alright so let's talk about the the converse of uh, the Pythagorean theorem so remember converse is just a way of stating theorems kind of like in the reverse order so remember that the Pythagorean theorem basically just says that um, that in a right triangle the square of the length of the hypotenuse so if you square the hypotenuse then this is equal to the sum of the legs being squared okay so that's what the Pythagorean theorem states um, this converse says that if the square of the length of the longest side of a triangle um, if this is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides then the triangle is a right triangle so basically to kind of sum it up this one said that if you have a right triangle so if a right triangle then this is true and then this one says if you have a triangle and this turns out to be the case where you have the two shorter legs and if you square them and add them and it's equal to the longest leg being squared then this is a right triangle so basically the, this one says if right triangle then c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared but this one says let's say that you have a triangle and we don't know if it's a right triangle or not but if the sum of two if you let's say this if the squared legs if the sum of the squared shorter sides um, shorter sides is equal to the side uh, longer side squared then it's a right triangle okay tell whether each triangle is a right triangle so we want to prove that these are right triangles so we don't know whether or not this is a right triangle or not and so what we need to do is we need to take the shorter sides um, and then compare that with the longer side. So first let's make sure that um, square root of 133 is indeed the longer side. So I'm going to do the square root of one, uh, sorry, 113. That's equal to, okay, so that is longer. So let's see, so if we take 8 squared plus 7 squared, does this equal the square root of 113? So that's what we're trying to uh, solve. Okay. Um, so 8 squared, which is 64. And then plus 49. It does this equal to the square root of... Um, oh, I need to make sure that this is squared. It has to be uh, squared. Um, does that equal... So whenever we do that, you can see that, um, sorry, one second. Let me set this up just a little bit cleaner for us to understand just a little bit better. So does this equal this squared? So the square root of 113 squared. So when we do this, this is equal to 64. This is equal to 49. And this is equal to um, 113. 
because the radical and the exponent will cancel, so we'll be left with 1 and 3. So 64 plus 49 does indeed equal 113. So yes, it does. So uh, this is a right triangle. So yes, it's a right triangle. Okay. Now for this one, if we take these square, uh, these square them and add them, does this equal to this squared? So if I do 36 squared plus 15 squared, does this equal 4 square root of 95 squared? So let's see. So 36 squared, if you punch that in, should get 1, 2, 96. And then 15 squared is 225. And then this right here would be well, 4 squared, which would be 16. And then square root of 95 squared, which would be 95. So 16 times 95 is equal to 1520. And then let's do. 1296, 1296 plus 225, and we get 1521. So you can see that they are not equivalent, so not a right triangle. So not a right triangle. Okay, so that's how you can check them. Okay, let's talk about inequalities now. So, for inequalities, these uh, Pythagorean inequality theorem, it helps us understand whether or not um, we are going to uh, have obtuse. So basically, it helps us. We, we know that Pythagorean theorem is strictly, if the Pythagorean holds true, then it means that we're dealing with right triangles. Um, but we can still use the Pythagorean theorem to help us understand if we're dealing with obtuse triangles or acute triangles. So um, basically, this is what it says. So if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, then we could say that a triangle ABC is acute. So basically if we have this triangle let me change this up a little bit okay so if we have this triangle right here which is obviously not a right triangle um, so like right here all the angles are acute though you can see that we have acute angles right here um, and so if we can prove if we can show that the the shorter side lengths so let's say that we had this is a this is b this is c this is a this is b this is c so a capitals uppercase are the angles and then the lowercase are the sides but if we take the longest side length and square it if it is uh, less than squaring these and adding them then we're going to have an acute triangle and then the opposite says so if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared then a triangle abc is obtuse so if we have an obtuse triangle meaning that it has an angle that is larger than uh, 90 degrees. It's like right here, that's an obtuse. So we'll call this uh, ABC, capital C, AB, lowercase c. Um, then this is what this is what would happen. So if we take the, the longest side, square it. If this is greater than squaring these and adding them, then it's going to be an obtuse um, triangle. So let's see if we can't classify some some of these triangles. So verify that the segments with the lengths 4.3 feet, 
5.2 feet and 6.1 feet form a triangle. So do they form a triangle? So we can do this by um, seeing if we can um, add them together um, and making sure that they fit the, the criteria here. So let's say that we take this one right here, 4.3, if we add that to 5.2, is that greater than 6.1? So 5.3 plus uh, 4.3 plus 5.2, I think that should equal about 9.5, and that is greater than 6.1. Okay, so we're good there. 4.3 plus 6.1, is that greater than? Um, 5.2 and so then we get 10.4 is greater than 5.2 and then if we do 5.2 plus 6.1 is that greater than 4.3 this is 11.3 and that's greater than uh, 4.3 so we're good there so all these check out it basically what we did we're just making sure that these side lengths can even form a a triangle and we're using these inequalities to um, make sure that they they can because if we take two sides add them together and it is and it ends up that it is less than the side here the other side then it can't form a triangle so that's what we did here we take two sides make sure that it is greater than the other side take two sides make sure it's greater than the other side and if we can do that with all sides then we can show that we can at least form a triangle huh. excuse me now we want to make we want to see if it forms an acute right or an obtuse triangle so now let's use this one up here the Pythagorean inequality theorem okay um, and this says uh, so if we take um, the two shorter side lengths so that would be these two so 4.3 squared plus 5.2 squared does this equal is this basically we're trying to figure out if this is um, equal to less than or greater than that's what we're trying to find out 6.1 so let's see 4.3 squared is 18.49 5.2 squared equal to 27.04 and then we'll see what this is not sure what it's going to be um, I should make sure that this is being squared 6.1 squared thirty-seven point two one okay so we need to add those together eighteen point four nine Um, 18.49 plus 27.04 and I get 45.53 so 45.53 37.21 so this is greater than this is uh, obviously greater than 37.21 and so if that's the case so let's look up here so if the sum of these is greater than this then it has to be um, an acute triangle right so this is for acute so this triangle will be an acute triangle Okay, so again, just kind of recap what we did. First, make sure that you can even form a triangle. So I'm not sure if you guys learned this in a previous year. So this was the, this part right here. This is called the triangle um, 
inequality theorem. So I think you guys have heard of that or might have used it before. Um, but in any case, so check and see if it uh, can even form a triangle. So you're making sure that if you take the sum of any two side lengths and make sure that it is greater than the other side length. So you have to do that for all of them. Verify that and then check and see if it's a if it's an acute, a right or an obtuse triangle. And that's using the Pythagor Pythagorean Pythagorean inequality theorem. So you can double you can uh work on those right there. Um and yeah. So that should pretty much do it for me. Um, make sure you reach out to me if there are any other questions on this unit.